the tail end of the COVID pandemic, an underqualified Trump-nominated judge issued a ruling against mask mandates. This judge used a weird, never-used legal theory that you could word search like key phrases and apply the old-timey meanings to provide legitimacy to the ruling. And guess where this judge got this legal theory? At a Coke-funded, all-expenses-paid luxury trip where the primary mission was persuading federal judges to adopt this arcane theory. And guess who the judge clerked for? You guessed it, Clarence Thomas. Today, Fix the Court reported that according to their tally, Justice Thomas has received the most gifts of any judge dating back to the Antonin Scalia era during his time on the court by a mile with 193 gifts, totaling more than $4 million. I'm joined now by Ellie Mastal, justice correspondent for the nation. So at this point, Ellie, I guess they just take all the 30-year-old right-wing college graduates from Liberty University and just send them on fancy trips and then they're Clarence Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, look, I think it's important for people to ask, what are these people paying for, right? Yeah. What are they getting for their $4 million they've given to Clarence Thomas over the past 20 years? And what they're getting, just to link the, your last segment together, what they're <laughs> getting is what Byron Donalds wants. What they're getting is Jim Crow, right? What they're getting is a guy like Clarence Thomas, who, like Byron Donalds, entire judicial philosophy is that, well, there, some Negroes are magic, right? No matter what the white man does to us, we can just rise above as long as they don't shoot us or kill us or rape us or drown us, right? And if you tell people that, if you're black, if you're Donald's, if you're Thomas, and you tell white people that, they will give you money. And mm -hmm. that is what's happened to Clarence Thomas for 20 years. He has told white folks exactly what, he, what they want to hear, ruled exactly as they would like him to rule and done it as their black friend. And so the money is just pouring out. And you see it in these reports where, again, Clarence Tom, the, in, the, in the figures that we saw today, you know, uh, Sam Alito made like $200,000 over the past, you know, disclosed gifts over the past 20 years. Antonin Scalia, the hero of their movement, yeah. again, around 200,000. Clarence Thomas, $4 million. It's dollars. That's yeah. why Tim Scott exists. That's and, why and the, Byron Donald exists. That's why Candace Owens exists, because the grift is good. There's a lot of money in telling white folks what they need to hear. It is, it is amazing, because when I looked at the chart, it was like, I thought that Clarence Thomas's was the total, because it was so much bigger. Anthony Scalia, like you said, is six figures. He's in the two, the three, the four. This guy is, and you're right, it, it is a thing that the right is willing to pay extra to get women, and especially black people, to tell them what they want to hear about women and black people. Tell them that black people don't want to be able to have a fearless fund. They, you know, they shouldn't be able to give 20. I wanted, if I had time, to ask him if he, if he supported the fearless fund uh, being not able to give grants out. I'm sure he does, because that's what he's right. that's what he's supposed to say. I mean, it's like, look, it makes me some I looked at that chart today. I, I look at people like Donald Trump and think, man, I made the wrong financial choices in my <laughs> life. Right. Because, like, there's money out there for these people. But always remember, and I just want folks to remember this. They're getting something for their yes, money. They are. This yeah. isn't charity, right? They're getting rulings, they're getting opinions, they're getting the kind of return to not 1950s, but to the 1850s that they want for their funds. And if we, the rest of us, who are not making it, you know, the other funny thing is that, you know, you saw like the liberals, like Sotomayor, had like a bunch of gifts, but they were clearly all like five bucks, right? People were like, like, like here's, a, here's a flower, Sonia. Like that's what she was getting, right? <laughs> So all of us who don't have the money to buy our own Supreme Court justices, what we need to do is, is use what power we have, the power we didn't have during the Jim Crow South, and go out and vote for people who are going to hold the Supreme Court justices to heal through ethics legislation and other reforms. Hank Johnson, congressman from, from Georgia, my man, he's got an ethics bill right now on the House floor. We need to vote for people who are going to support that bill and ask our political leaders when we go to vote, are you going to support ethics reform? Yes. No more nice letters, all right? No more yeah. like, oh, we're not, no, no more of that stuff. Are you going to support the bills to stop these people from graft? Amen, my brother. Uh, Ellie Mustall, uh, who understands what Jim Crow was and also what the grift looks like, because it's the grift is good for Clarence and then thank you very much. Those gifts that were subsequently reported out.
To take you through just a handful that will give you a sense, Justice Elena Kagan's calculated to have received gifts valued at just under $1,200. That's over 20 years. Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, over $59,000. Again, over 20 years, $3,000 a year. Now, Justice Samuel Alito taking quite a bit more, $170,000 over 20 years. But none of that is in the zip code of the ballpark of Justice Clarence Thomas, whose gifts totaled over $4 million. To give you a sense of how that looks in chart form, take a look. Can you see where Justice Thomas is on that, that, that bar chart? The big red bar on the left, that's Clarence Thomas compared to all the other justices who served during this time. Melissa Murray is a professor at the New York University School of Law, co-host of Strict Scrutiny podcast along with Leah Lippman and my wife, Kate Shaw, and she joins me now. I got to say, at some level, we knew bits and pieces of this. We, you know, um, there's been an amazing series of pro-public articles, some of which won the Pulitzer, about all of the gifts that Thomas has gotten. But to see it put out like that, like, am I wrong? This is a generational scandal for the court. Oh, 100%. I think you're exactly right. We have seen this sort of trickle out piecemeal, but having it splayed out in the aggregate really does make clear the expanse of the grift. I mean, I, I think that's the right term for it. It is a grift. Of, if you think about Justice Thomas's salary over the course of his time on the court during this period that's been reported, it's roughly equal to the amount of the gifts that, <laughs> that Fix the Court has identified here. I mean, that is actually quite staggering. He's managed to amass two distinct income streams. Yeah, let's, we actually ran the math on this. So the cumulative gross pay over that period is about $4.6, $4.7 million. The total gifts is over $4 million. He's got two masters, like he's working, the servant of two masters, like he's working for, you know, the, the American people. And then he's got... Well, wait, wait, which American people? So let's talk about that because... <laughs> well, he's been getting paid by the taxpayers. Well, for sure. But I mean, it has been said that look where your treasure is for there your heart will be also. <laughs> right. And it's not surprising that some of the individuals who have been linked to some of these gifts, like the Koch Brothers Network, which has had Justice Thomas speak at donor events, for example, happens to be deeply involved in a set of major challenges to the regulatory state. These are cases we're still waiting for the court to decide, but we already know at least where the Koch brothers would like Justice Thomas to be. I guess now we're just waiting to find out if, have they made enough payments on it? I don't know. But that's kind of where all of this is going. Part, part of, you know, the argument that people will make in defense of, of Thomas is that, well, he was always a conservative anyway, and these are just his friends hooking him up. No, and it's it's not unconstitutional to have friends. So I want, want to be very clear <laughs> about that. Um, you have a right to have friends, even rich friends. But I think where the optics of this become more problematic is that we are seeing individuals essentially donate funds to the court to keep this conservative supermajority in play. I mean, so there's been a lot of reporting, some of it by the New York Times last year, about this Justice Thomas complaining about his small judicial salary, which is actually quite significant relative to what other Americans make, and how maybe he wouldn't stay on the court. And all of these very wealthy interests were like, no, no, no. Let's figure out how to keep you on the court and keep you happy. And suddenly you see the money start rolling in. We've got some breaking news now. In brand new financial disclosure statements, Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas is now acknowledging controversial luxury trips in 2019 paid for by billionaire Harlan Crow. NBC's Lawrence Hurley is following this for us. So what more are we learning, Lawrence, from this financial disclosure? Yeah, and the report, this is the annual reports that the justices put out uh, every year. And um, up until the series of stories by ProPublica last year that ended up uh, winning a Pulitzer Prize, um, the uh, Clarence Thomas had said that these types of things didn't need to be disclosed. And he maintained that even after the ProPublica stories came out uh, that detailed his trips with Harlan Crow and some other things like that. And so these this report today is kind of interesting because he has a, a, an amendment to his 2019 report uh, in which he says he had inadvertently omitted a couple of trips, uh, one of which was to Bali uh, with Harlan Crow, and another one was to uh, the Bohemian Grove uh, private club in California, also with Harlan Crow. And so he had amended his report just to make that clear 
under the new rules that were adopted last year, justices you know certainly have to report this type of thing. Uh, Thomas had previously said that you know there was a kind of loophole that meant he didn't have to. So you tweeted this out. Uh, Fix the court released a list of gifts the justices have received in the last two decades. And wow, the reported gifts for Justice Clarence Thomas. I don't know if you at home can see these numbers here. He's by far and away the person who has received the most gifts, gifts uh, an estimated two point four million dollars in reported gifts. And the FIXA court estimates he received up to four million dollars in gifts. Mark, is there no? I mean, there, and we just move on. Is that is that the idea Look, here? Rather than reiterate how utterly broken our system is, that there's seemingly no accountability for a, a justice who takes millions of dollars in gifts and then illegally refuses to disclose them, I want to point out some of the other numbers on that chart. Look at some of the liberal justices and the moderate justices. They are not participating in this same racket. Some of these justices, like Souter, look, even Kavanaugh, they only have a few hundred dollars worth of gifts that they've received. They are trying, to some degree, to play by the rules while they watch their colleagues flout those same rules. And the point I want to make is that it is possible to serve as an ethical justice. It is possible to say these are the guidelines that both Congress and the judiciary itself have set, and I'm going to work within them. Clarence Thomas has decided he is above those rules and quite literally above the law. And that really does set him apart. I think even from someone like Sam Alito, who comes in uh, second, a distant second, having accepted many gifts from uh, billionaires, but it's still not on the scale of Thomas. And so what this shows is that Thomas is in a league of his own when it comes to this kind of corruption. Yeah, I would say Clarence Thomas and Sam Alito are in mutual leagues of their own. Different ways, different justices, same court. Mark Joseph Stern, thank you again for your time and incandescent rage about what is a broken, broken court. I so folks, remember what I've been saying. With the right wing, they have to fake it until they make it. They cannot admit anything we've been saying about them is correct, even partially. And that's why Thomas has made the cardinal sin, committed the cardinal sin, where he's finally admitted the Harlan Crow stuff. He finally disclosed it. Remember, forever this man not only denied some of these things, but denied when caught that he ever had to say anything. And now all of a sudden he is disclosing it. And now there's millions and millions in gifts making the other judges, some of whom also have ethical concerns, look squeaky clean in comparison as most of them have taken either a few hundred or a few thousand dollars of gifts. Some of them actual you know, items that may have historic significance, but are nonetheless expensive. So they have to disclose them. But he's just taken trips and luxury items. These are not, you know, gifts you give a judge, but gifts you give somebody you want to influence to make certain decisions or not make certain decisions. And this is terrible for Trump because, again, regardless of Clarence Thomas's ultimate decisions, now he is ruined as a Supreme Court judge. He has lost all credibility. And remember, the courts only have power insofar as people believe in them. We exist in a society where we need to believe in things. And the Supreme Court now, any decision made by Clarence Thomas is now in the minds of decent people, null and void. He's not just a far right nut job who you disagree with. He is a person whose very ethics do not exist. And so any Trump related decision, any right wing connected decision, his career is over. And this means that in the minds of the people, Trump loses every Supreme Court case he has as long as this guy is on the court.